Hello, today we have another little bag from Vifly, the last of the free bags that arrived over Christmas. Uh, but just before we get into that, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you don't like it. Comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find that little bell icon, you can click on that and uh, some stuff might happen. Magic stuff, who knows. So what we've got here is the Vifly Store Safe, which is an interesting little product because the idea is it's a sort of standalone thing that can discharge your battery to storage state. And um, I'll get this stuff out of the bag so I can show you what it looks like. And in the bag you get the little Vifly thank you card. You get some useful instructions which are definitely worth reading about this. And then you get two of these little things. And you can probably just about see the, the idea of these. This is an XT60 and XT30. And it's got a heat sink here. So basically the idea is it's going to dissipate that uh, current out as heat. And then hopefully the heatsink takes that away. I think this certainly be interesting to test because when I looked at this the, the first thing I said is well there's no balance lead so how does it know how many cells there are and how does it know you're gonna discharge and still be in balance when you get to storage charge. It, it, it says it automatically detects how many cells it's got. I'm guessing it's doing that based around the voltage range because it does say if, if it doesn't match what it thinks it does by using little LEDs, then contact them. And it says you've got to be above 3.95 volts before you start. So why would you use these? Why wouldn't you just come home and do a storage charge? I suppose it depends on the circumstances. If you've had the discharge batteries manually, you'll know it's quite a slow process. Generally speaking, even big chargers can't discharge at a large rate. So it might be handy having a few of these and plugging them in and getting some batteries down to storage charge. The reason you would want batteries on storage charge and not just leave them fully charged um, is, is for two reasons really. Batteries don't tend to like it much if they're either fully charged or fully discharged. So they don't last as long, their internal resistance goes up. Also when batteries are either fully charged or fully discharged, their chemistry is not in the best stable state. The most stable state a LiPo battery can be in is at storage charge, which is why it's always a good idea to have your batteries at storage. So I figure it might be the case that, you know, you might have a bunch of these and you might start taking any unused batteries to storage and then perhaps you might finish them off with a regular charger to make sure they're balanced in that. I don't know yet. I'm going to go down a close up. Let's plug in a few batteries. Let's see exactly what happens and then we can check out exactly what sort of charge they're doing. In fact, because we won't be using the balance uh, lead at all from the batteries, I can always plug in something to read the voltage of that as it discharges it, which might be interesting. But anyway, let's go to close up. Let's get these tested and let's see what happens. Okay, so testing these guys. What I did is I've charged up these two batteries and I thought what we'd do is see how they discharge using these. But what I've also got is one of these and I can leave it plugged into one and this doesn't show up very well in the light, but you can see hopefully there, you can't see the red one very well, that we're 4.2 on that one, that's okay. We've got 4.2, 4.2, 4.21, 4.1, oh no, 4. Point... I'll have to read them out because this is not very clear. It's okay as long as you don't have light shining on it, but the camera really can't pick up those first two lines at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these in. Now there are some LEDs on here and these should indicate what the batteries have. So there's a, a green and a blue and a red. And if you just get blue light, light up, it says it's 2S. Blue and red is 3S. Green on its own, 4S. Green and red, 5S. And green and blue, 6S. So first off, let's see if it detects the right thing. So it says there'll be about five seconds of flashing and it will get on with uh, discharging. So it's detected green, that's good, and it's gonna start discharging as heat and what I should see in here is this start going down. So I'll keep looking at that and of course what we want to know is how well it's gonna look after this. How much do we have to think about redoing? So this one should also uh, show up green because this is a 4S. If I have to thought about it a bit more I'd have done a different uh, size LiPo but there you go. I didn't so Again, we've got a nice green flash. These are fully charged batteries. As, as you might sort of do, you know, you've gone to the field, you've done some flying, you've crashed stuff and you've got some batteries left. That's gone green as well. So I'll pl just leave that there. And I'm just gonna basically leave these. I'm not gonna carry on filming, but I will put a timer on, timer on my watch, just to see how long things take. Although it's gonna be more of an approximate thing rather than 
anything else just to see how long it goes yeah and I will come back and it doesn't really say what happens when it finishes it says it will finish charging when these get to 3.85 volts plus or minus about 0 0.08 volts I'm not sure if we're expecting the light to go out or something different and that's why it's quite handy having this to check it and we've got a sort of drop there of about 4.18 4.19 and cell 2 has gone to 4.21 which is weird but you kind of expect the drain to be across or cells it just hasn't got the ability to obviously go back and tidy up the cells which is going to be the interesting thing anyway we'll leave those we'll come back we'll see what happens okay we're only about 10 minutes in and one of the things i wanted to check is exactly how hot this got of course this is gonna put all the uh current out as heat then yeah that's quite hot as you might expect uh so don't like touch it or put it somewhere where it can catch fire this way up's okay hasn't done much at the moment it's on about 4.0 18 4.19 so not much happened there i did come back because i noticed this light had gone off but um <laughs> this doesn't look good actually uh if i plug that in and uh you probably can't see this very well but this is saying sort of 4.19 4.20 4.19 4.19 but the light's gone off which means it's stopped i think so i thought there's no heat there maybe it's just Got a bit wrong so I tried plugging that back in like so and I don't get any LEDs at all that can't be good can it have I just got a failure here I don't know I'll try and find out but that that seems to not be working but I'll leave that plugged in just in case the LEDs gone and we'll come back when uh, when this light goes out okay still going I've been letting this run for just over two hours now and you can tell the discharge is only one watt because we are only down to about 4.1 so uh, it's going to take a little while longer I think check it out, the light's actually gone off now I've had to film this over two days and it's so far been eight and a half hours and according to this we're on 3.82, 3.88, 3.94, 3.94 let's put this on a proper charger just to check what we get there but um, that's a long time isn't it Okay, here's my trusty charger, which I do trust. So let's plug it in and see what we've actually got here. So we're not exactly in balance. We got 3.86, 3.86, and then 3.9, 3.9. Obviously the discharger sort of assumed that it got to 3.85-ish. Um, which presumably it calculated by looking at that voltage and dividing it which wouldn't really come to 3.85 so I don't know why it would happen but I always suspected that we'd have to do a quick finishing off job so just as an interest point of view how long does it then take to uh, get this to storage properly and bear in mind my storage I use is 3.8 rather than 3.85 and that answer is 8 minutes 45 Five. Well, that's 3.81, eh, 0 0.01 out, but close enough. So why does it take that long? And the answer, I might be able to answer with this thing that I keep meaning to review and never did, which is the Toolkit RC amp meter. Um, I've plugged in the XT60 version of the, um, the store safe, and I'm going to plug this one in here. And then we can just have a look to see what one watt means in terms of what it's doing so that's gone a solid green and one watt is 0 0.06 amps which yeah isn't much is it and that's why discharging a 1.3 amp 4s battery takes around eight hours so i'm not really sure how useful that is Okay, well those were the Vifly store safes. And to explain what happened to the little XT30 one, um, it did kind of come back after a while. I plugged the uh, battery in and it came on and it went off again. So I actually recorded this. So uh, Vifly asked me if I could actually like, record it uh, doing that to see if there was any flashing uh, on the LEDs that could give some sort of indication. And there was this flashing and I found it was only three minutes in and that's the flashing which should mean it's finished so we had a look at it I examined one of the resistors with a 
uh, multimeter. So it sort of checked out and looked okay, but essentially I think I've just got a duff. Now these were the uh, early prototypes that they sent out to reviewers, so it might just be a reviewer's curse thing. Of course, if you did get a dud, you'd get a replacement from them. Nobody else got back and reported this error, so hopefully that's just one of the early prototypes that wasn't uh, quite as good as the, the ones they're checking out. Obviously the XC60 one worked okay, so I got the gist of what would generally happen to this one, because it's the same amount of discharge that, that it will handle. And it, it is a long time. Now, Vifly said to me they thought it would take about seven hours for a 4S1300, five hours for a 3S, and one and a half hours for a 2S. Uh, one and a half hours for a 2S is not bad, but as soon as you start getting to five and seven hours, for me, it's a bit long. I'd prefer to just put it on uh, a charger and storage charger this way. Now, the idea of this is you kind of plug them in and you, you forget about them. You leave them there and they discharge and you can obviously tidy it up at the end of the, the session. But because it's so long, that's seven hours for me. I don't want to leave a battery just sat there plugged into something, even if it's you know only taking 0 0.05 amps. That's still a battery left on its own and I, I, I don't like to do that. So these aren't for me at all. I, I don't really like them. Um, you might differ in your opinion and certainly you can check these out, but no, they're, they're not of any use for me. I just prefer to storage charge back on a charger, but maybe for some they are. If you can think of particularly good use that I haven't thought of, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, of course, thanks to Vifly for supplying these and there's links down below if you want to check them out in more detail. Until next time, I hope this review has been helpful and uh, catch you then. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.